Inventories. Since the earliest days of video game history, inventories have been an elemental design aspect for a lot of different types of games. An inventory allows the player to store, equip or manage items in a way that fits the individual game and may also provide easy access to related features like crafting. An inventory seems so fundamental to so many different genres from RPGs over action adventures to survival games that I'm not sure if there even is any other feature which breaks genre borders so consistently. I mean, even an old school text adventure like 1980's Zork has an inventory. They are everywhere. But why am I telling you this? now? As some of you might know, I'm somewhat of a video game developer myself, and one of my many hobby projects, Exo Colony, also features an inventory system. But to be totally honest, it is quite basic, and I think this needs to change. So in today's Exo Colony devlog, I'm going to show you how I iterated on my inventory approach and item management in general. And later in the video, I will also update you on my future plans for the project, since I know that many of you lovely people are quite curious about the game's state, and it's been a while since I've talked about it. So without further ado, let's jump right into it. Before I could start to reiterate on my inventory system, I first had to evaluate the current state of it. So for the code side of things, I went into my row and made a diagram of all the classes responsible for items and inventory stuff. Now let's have a look at the game itself. So there are items, those items are lying around the game world and every item or stack of items takes up one grid tile. The player can pick up those items and they will wander into the inventory. The inventory itself is just this bottom bar of 13 slots where all the items are stored. Now the player can select any item and put the complete stack or just one of the items on the ground if there is space in front of the player. Now this was fine and it did support the basic needs for testing all the different features that are currently part of the game. But there are obviously several sub-features missing which would be considered standard in most games with an inventory system. The player should be able to sort the items, throw away items that are not wanted anymore, have some kind of menu screen overview and also an inventory with only 13 slots is not really a lot of space for this kind of game. And on top of that, some kind of way to store multiple items on one grid tile in the game world would also be kinda nice. So there was a lot to do and it was time to get going. As always, I started by jumping into a sprite to paint the necessary UI sprites. For the main inventory screen, I decided to increase the item capacity to 39 items, three times as many as before. Then I made a little trash can icon, so that players can later drop stuff on it to get rid of unwanted items. After that, I painted a little item pack or chest if you will, so that players have a possibility to store multiple items on one tile. To interact with this item pack, I then also made an inventory UI for it and decided that for the first iteration of this system, it should be able to hold 9 items at the same time. At last, I painted these little dots to indicate in the heart which section of the inventory is currently selected in game. Now that all the necessary art was finished, it was time to jump into Unity and start implementing. I started with the hut bottom UI and put the mansion dots next to the item bar. Now I had to refactor the old inventory system quite a lot to make it so that there are now three internal rows of 13 items instead of just one. Then I wired the new inventory to the HUD UI and here we go. The player can switch the current active row of items by just pressing up or down on the D-pad. If the player picks up an item, it lands in the currently selected row. Perfect. Now it was time to set up the actual inventory menu screen. With the refactored internal inventory system, it wasn't too difficult to make it so that all 39 item slots show what's currently stored in them. The more interesting part was to implement the functionality so that the player can pick up and drop items in the menu. So here you can see how it's not supposed to work. Instead of moving the item to a new place, you can just clone any item stack you want and create almost infinite amounts of items. After a while of tinkering around, the basic functionality for the inventory was working fine. The next task on the to-do was the item pack. I made it so that whenever an item is dropped onto a field already containing an item and they don't stack, the chest-like item pack spawns which contains both of the items. More items can be added to it and when the player interacts with the item pack, the inventory UI opens but then there is also the UI for the item pack. Now the player can move items from one place to another and here we go again. Okay, after more bug fixing it was working and now the item packs are also part of the game. Excellent. So the last thing I wanted to have for this situation was the possibility to throw items away. This was actually easy. I just added the trash can to the UI and then made it so that items dropped on it are deleted. 
simple but effective. Now, before I wrap up this video, I wanted to talk to you about the state of X Colony and the future of this video series. So I think that there's some misconception floating around, due to bad communication from my side, that I started the project with a very concrete idea of what I want the game to be and that I'm just following this very idea until it's done or at least in a state where I can make it available to play. In reality, this project started more as a sandbox game dev side project inspired by other games I played two years ago. So there was never really a concrete game design in my head, more a vague idea of a game somewhere between Estony and Littlewood. And to get there, I thought about just throwing features in the sandbox, see what works and what doesn't, and then show these steps of figuring it all out to all of you in a YouTube devlog series. And that's more or less still where I am now. And that's also what I want this project to be. Just a sandbox for me to try out different things and then hopefully someday I'll have a version of the game I can share with all of you lovely people out there. Now, doing all of this while also trying to maintain a YouTube channel related to this and game dev in general, this is a bit tricky for different reasons. The main reason is that to make these videos somewhat interesting for a wider audience than just programmers, I have to present some content in every video that's more exciting than I refactored the load and save system for two weeks. Nothing changed gameplay wise, but it's now more stable. So what I did was I added a lot of exciting features to Exocolony over the last one and a half year, but I didn't really take the time to make them super stable or even finish them in some cases. For example, the crafting factory still doesn't have a UI to choose what you want to build or the interaction with those cute animals is also still very basic. And then there are a ton of bugs and just bad code architecture or not working design decisions I need to revisit and fix. If I want to continue this project, I need to tackle all these more boring tasks, but this needs time and is not super fitting for an exciting devlog series. So how will I continue? First of all, I'm not going to scrap Exocolony, but instead I will take the time to refactor, redesign and revisit everything that's not really working at the moment. And I will present you the progress on this in future Exocolony devlogs. But these videos will be released even less frequently than now and I will only make them if something significant has changed about the game. Now, to fill the resulting space on the channel, you can expect more regular videos about other side projects I'm working on and game jams I'm participating in. I try to pick my side projects in a way that I can learn a lot about different aspects of game development I don't yet have that much experience in. So you can probably expect a lot of very different prototypes and games I'm going to present to you. And most of the time, you will also be able to play them, not like with Exocolony. So that's a yay. I hope that you can understand why the Exocolony devlogs will be released in a less frequent manner from now on. And I also hope that you will enjoy my other videos and games, which are already in preparation. If that's the case and you want to support me, please consider subscribing, hit the like button and feel free to join my Discord server or follow me on Twitter and Instagram. All links are in the description as always. We will see each other soon in another video on this channel. Until then, have a good time and goodbye!